This is AP Econ with Arturo. Today's topic is the factor markets. So, what is the factor market? First, we have to understand the product market, which you are all probably familiar with. In the product market, there are two sides, the individual and the business. The individuals demand goods and services, while the businesses provide these needs. And in turn, the individual spent money becomes the business's revenues. But in the factor market, the individuals provide resources to the businesses. And the businesses' cost for these resources become the individual's incomes. So let's take the scenario of Arturo's Muffin Factory. If the government realized that Arturo's special ingredient cures AIDS, then the demand for Arturo's muffins would increase. When the demand for Arturo's muffins increases, Arturo demands more muffin bakers. However, if this secret ingredient is discovered to actually be cyanide, the demand for Arturo's muffins would decrease, as well as his demand for workers. This concept is called derived factor demand, and it states that the demand for labor in an industry correlates directly to the demand for their produced product. So, let's say Arturo changes his famous muffin recipe, and now he must rehire his workers. At first, Arturo's workers' productivity increases for each one hired, as they can specialize their baking. But over time, each additional worker increases productivity less and less. The productivity for the last worker hired is Arturo's marginal productivity. If we were to multiply this by the price at which the muffins are sold at, we get Arturo's marginal revenue product. So, marginal revenue product is marginal product multiplied by the price at which he sells his product. While MRP is the marginal product of the worker, Arturo realizes that workers are not free. The cost of hiring each additional worker is called marginal revenue cost, and is essentially the worker's wage. So as Arturo is a rational actor, he wants to maximize the profits of his muffin empire. He will base his hiring decisions off of the point where MRC equals MRP. This will be the point at which his last additional baker generates revenue that is equal to his wage. Let's step into the life of Bob the Muffin Man. Bob is the last worker hired by Arturo. In one day, Bob can bake a grand total of one muffin. Thus, his marginal product is equal to one. But Arturo sells his muffins for 10 cents each. Thus, Bob's marginal revenue product is 1 times 0 0.1, or 0 0.1. This means that Arturo hires Bob as Arturo pays his work 10 cents a day. That night, Bob goes home to his wife, only to realize the bitter truth. Their son wants to go to culinary school to become a baker like his father. However, Bob would need to work for hundreds of years to make enough money to pay for this. But Bob has a moment of clarity, and decides to band together with his fellow workers and demand higher pay. Bob is forming what is called a labor union. For the union to succeed, Bob would need to advertise the union, lobby government officials, or increase the price of other substitute resources. So let's say Bob succeeds in his goal, and Arturo is forced to implement minimum wage for his bakers. But there are negative effects for Arturo. The minimum wage will essentially institute a wage floor in the muffin market. This would shift the MRC upwards, forcing Arturo to hire less workers. So even though Bob succeeds, he will need to be fired by Arturo to maintain the policy of MRC equals MRP. This is an example of the controversy of minimum wage, as despite it giving workers more money, it will either increase unemployment or increase prices. Because large business owners like Arturo are getting large profits and only paying the workers the minimum amount, the market distribution of income is very unequal. To measure the distribution of income across the population, we have the Lorenz curve. This curve shows the deviation of the distribution from perfect equality. The Gini index is a measure of this deviation, with zero being perfect equality and numbers above that being more and more unequal. Let's pretend that Arturo is hiring in a perfectly competitive market. This means that Arturo has an infinite supply of unskilled labor, and they will all work for a price set by the market. 
Thus, Arturo is a wage taker, as he can't change the wages he pays his workers. In a perfectly competitive factor market, the wage is set at the point where supply crosses demand. But this demand can be shifted by changes in the productivity of the workers, like if Bod's replacement, Rob, can make two full muffins a day. Thus, Arturo would want more workers as they are more valuable to him. Other shifters include derived demand, which we discussed earlier, and changes in the price of substitute or complement resources. For example, if new machines help Arturo's workers make more muffins a day, Arturo will also demand more workers. But supply can also be shifted. For example, a massive wave of immigrants could fill the market, which would cause a massive increase in the supply of workers. Additionally, government regulations like minimum wage can shift the supply. Change in the society can also change the supply of workers. Society may decide that working in a muffin factory is too lower class for them, causing less people to apply for the job. Now that Arturo knows the equilibrium wage for the market, he knows that every additional worker that he hires will ask for the same wage, as he hires in a perfectly competitive market with unskilled workers. This results in a horizontal MRC for Arturo's muffin factory, which is equal to his supply of workers. Now that Arturo knows his MRC, he can then determine his marginal revenue product, or MRP, which was previously calculated as marginal product times price. His MRP is also equal to his demand for workers. Now Arturo will hire where MRP crosses MRC, so again, Bob would sadly not make the cut. Now, let's say Arturo decides to build a massive wall around the bulk of his employees, preventing them from working anywhere else. What Arturo has created is called a monopsony. In a monopsony, Arturo has become the wage maker, allowing him to determine the wages he wants to pay his workers. If Arturo wants to hire more workers, he has to increase their wage, resulting in an upward sloping MRC curve and supply line. But demand is still the same as a perfectly competitive market. And just like in a perfectly competitive market, the quantity of labor is where MRC and MRP cross. However, the price at which a monopsony pays its workers is the point on the supply curve directly beneath where MRP and MRC cross. Hopefully, Arturo's Muffin Factory has shed light on the basics of the factory market. Thanks for watching.